Uh, kia ora, kia ora, good being put up at Yep, they got it right. Kongati Tuera, Maho, Pongarehu, I'm from down the bottom end of that photo, picture. Um, I've worked with Tuna, Tangaure, Takarohi, Takanoi, Tapatiki, all those fish that boil in the river. Um, yeah, so uh, I've been asked by uh, our Natanga Te Tiaki and Te Manawa Te Awa to put a group together to look at the development of a Wanganui River catchment strategy. And I think we have the biggest catchment in the country. It's huge. That's it, goes right up to Bennydale, up by you, Tony. I see you here somewhere. Um, so it's, it's, um, to do that, we had to put a team together. Uh, and um, we've had two or three meetings, and we wanted to come from a fisher's perspective. What do the fishers want? Not be told by up here, this is what you, how we think it should happen. So we pulled fishermen together, and um, yes. Uh, this Nga manga iti, nga manga nui e hono hono kawana ka tupu hei awa tupua. This is our river, and that's my rohe. That's my stretch of the river up at Pungariu. Um, to those of you who don't know, that is the centre of the universe. And if you disagree with it, the door is over there. Please leave. <laughs> um, the purpose was <clears throat> te mana o te tuna. It's working together in the Wanganui River catchment to promote, protect the health and future of tuna by developing a strategy. And like I said, um, we have some of the team, uh, Sid Tamakehu, Brother Tom, Marcus Mackay from Kaipoki, Sunny Ranginui, Baldy, that's powder, is Baldy, in case you fellas didn't know. Greg Keenan, Johnny Wee from Taumaranui, Marilyn, uh, Bobby Tamakehu, Beryl, and Kahurere Moa uh, from NTT, Natanga Titiaki. And we've just met and listened to what they have to say. And what we're going to show you is what they've come up with. That's just some, um, I thought I'd better put a picture of some meals on. Um, you've heard this all morning, Ko Te Awa, Ko Te Awa I am the river and the river is me. And um, that's us as a people, you know, we, I, I don't really need to explain it to you because um, that's us. And if you have a problem with it, the door's over there. <laughs> tuna strategy development. A tuna strategy is important to ensure the health, well-being and abundance of the tuna. The mana of the tuna is utmost, is the most, it's the top priority for us. In doing that, we have to uphold the principles of the Te Awa Tupua, Tupua Te Kawa, and that's part of our settlement. Well, it's an, it's an act now, so we have to make sure that we uphold those principles. Ensure we preserve our fisheries, Tonga Tiku Iho, for future generations, and we've heard that right through. The, um, I guess later on in the, in the presentation, we'll be judged in the future on how well we've done today. And if we've done a bad job today, it will show in 50 years' time. Where the biggest fear I have is our mokopunas, mokopuna will say, hey, remember when we had those tuna in the, in the river? And, you know, that, that scares me. And they'll say, hey, Brew, your very kura was an asshole and never done anything or didn't do it properly. So we have to try and get this right, eh? Wano uh, hapu and iwi exercise greater mana mutuhake and rangatira tanga for sustainable fisheries. Um, better prepared to engage with the Crown or government and other stakeholders on fisheries kopawa. In the past, we've always been at the beck and call of the other stakeholders. They have, say, they've put a plan together. MPI say, we have a plan, we do a review, we need to come and consult with you. Once we finish this document, they will come and see us. We're not interested in their plan. They will come and talk to us. So at some stage, we need to go to those other stakeholders, the regional councils, the DOC, the re district councils, MEP, all those. So this is what this is about, is letting them, um, having a plan so that we can invite them and tell them, this is how we're going to do stuff. 
instead of being told. You've seen this picture from uh, before. Uh, this, the only reason I put this picture on, this is what we want to strive for. To, to safeguard and to ensure that the matauranga around our tuna is put in place and cemented for mairano is to be able to build one of these, the pātuna. Doesn't have to be the big one like that, you can just do the one. Uh, so that's really the aim. The vision we've come up with, uh, ko te awa te matapuna o te ora. The river is the source of spiritual and physical sustenance. And what our group looked at, our fishery and waters are healthy, sustainable, and supports the health and well-being of te awa tupua. Because if, it's a, if like they've heard before, if te awa tupua is healthy, uh, we as a people are healthy, and surely our fisheries must be healthy. Our mission, uh, this was <laughs> a healthy fresh, freshwater fishery that enables the, the hapu to exercise customary use emanating from mana atua. It didn't just happen, wake up one morning and it was there. We got it from somewhere, and Ken talked about <clears throat> the pakapapa of the tuna and the pakapapa, and so this is where this leaf comes from. And it's pretty straightforward, restore important tuna habitat and water quality in the river. Um, you heard both previous speakers talk about tuna habitat. I mean, the destruction of the tuna habitat on our river has been shocking. I mean, you would never get away with it today. Fishing grounds that we fished uh, as kids are now 12 feet up and 12 feet on dry land. Um, our kākahi beds at um, Parikino and Pungarihu. Uh, once upon a time, you could reach down and get hundreds of them. Now you're lucky to get a dozen or more. And uh, the, the lack of water has contributed to that. So we decided we need to develop tuna monitoring and management systems. So there's a lot of work being done around that. And my friend here from the US, she's an expert, along with some of the others. So we'll be tapping into that to her to get some, some of that knowledge. Research and education was another area that we decided was we needed to do. And also to establish governance and guardianship to ensure the health and well-being of tuna. Uh, with that come some traditional values. And once again, you heard it from Ken and Wakapapa. The importance of Wakapapa acknowledges, among other relationships, our direct connection to Te Awa Tupua and therefore the freshwater amenities. So it's not just the tuna, it's everything that lives in that freshwater. Kaitiaki Tanga, we're all big on that. It's about iwi affirming our obligations to the modi of the fisheries and the resources on which those fisheries depend. Please, Mary shouldn't have touched. Right. Kaitiaki Tanga. He ripo, he tipua, he kainga. That's what we believe in at each rapid, it's kaitiaki and people dwell. And you can see Waka Papa provides that linkage back to the Atua, effectively delegating responsibility and obligations to Wano, Hapu, and Iwi for the protection of all things, not just um, the tuna. In terms of fisheries, the role of kaitiaki allows for our Wano and Hapu to have availability to an abundance of kai from both the freshwater and the saltwater environments. Too often we separate them, yet the estuary goes for 10 to 12 miles up the river. So how can you separate the saltwater from the freshwater? When our tuna go from the freshwater to the saltwater, our piero come from the saltwater to the freshwater. Um, yeah, so we, we got it, but we decided we couldn't separate them. Carrying on with kaitianga, kaitiakitanga, refinement of our fisheries, fishing practices occurs through wānanga, and that's what we've been holding, where we transfer our matauranga to the next generation, who are able to continue with fulfilling our obligations and responsibilities to te awa tupua. So we've just gone away from the tuna because, like I said earlier, if we can fulfil our obligations to te awa tupua, everything that dwells in it becomes better and we have 
pera tuna, pera ngaure, pera karohi, pera kānoi. And kaitiaki is based on matauranga. Our matauranga is founded on a holistic perspective we are part of, that we are part of our environment. So we don't separate ourselves from the environment. And also we are able to utilise our tikanga and the management of our fisheries. Uh, too often management of fisheries is about other things, about abundance, about how many, how to... So we're saying, no, tikanga becomes the overriding uh, factor for, um, for our fisheries. Um, and also part of the, the, our settlement, the, we have to, we're going to register our catchment under the Kaimuana regulations. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but we are going to do that. And we've found that there are some management tools within the K regs that we think we can utilise for our management of our freshwater, our river, our tuna, and all the other fish. And it's also where Wano and Hapu agree information systems and expertise is shared and coordinated with other partnering organisations within the wider catchment. And that's about not being kaipuna with what you have. Share it. Don't belong to you. You're only looking after it. Matauranga. The enhancement care and management of Te Awatupu and the freshwater fisheries are well supported with ongoing tribal capability and capacity building. Mm. We'll see how, how good that is. Um, ideally, uh, they'll say, here, well, here's a check, go and do it. But it doesn't always work that way. Uh, identify tribal practices, knowledge, and management tools. Uh, whether we like it, whether we believe it or not, our old people managed our fisheries better than we've done today. Uh, and they had their own, their own tools. I mean, a, a simple form of that management was growing up at Parikino. We had a creek that was fished every five, six years. And that creek, oh, I, have, I have nightmares now, only yields we caught were like that. But we'd, only, we'd catch about a dozen. But we'd only go there for, after every five or six years. And that's a simple form of managing a, a catch. And I think our Otoko whānau used to do the same thing when they used to go healing up, up there your way too, eh, John? I remember um, Uncle Manu telling me about it and to focus on best practice models to implement our traditional practices in the use, management and protection of the tuna fishery, and more importantly, design and implement programs of learning for our kura kaupapa and our warekura. We've started that oh, last year or a couple of years ago, where I invited um, um, Niu up, uh, uh, Erica, and we came up and we went into one of our kura, um, caught some tuna and they were showed how to dissect them, how to age them and all that, and it was cool. And it was really, really exciting, wasn't it, Erica? And so we need to do more of that so that it becomes part of the curriculum rather than an add-on. Taiao environmental outcomes. Mai te kahu maunga ki tangaroa. Mana and rangatira tanga over our fisheries is restored, preserved and protected for future generations. The capacity and integrity of the aquatic environment, habitats and species are sustained at levels that provide for current and future use. And um, I mean, how, that's about habitat really. It's, uh, the other thing that our crew talked about was to identify land use and development activities that are threatening and destroying our tuna habitat. And we saw a good example of it just the other weekend where between Pipereke and Raitihi uh, on the river road um, someone had ripped nearly a kilometre of trees out of, the, out of the creek and as we were driving past um, one of the boys said, hey bro, that creek was one of the best we had for freshwater crayfish. And now that creek has no cover, no nothing, it's just... So, I mean, if we go back to um, the Ngā Manga Iti, Ngā, ngā Manga Nui e Hono Hono Kawana Ka Tupu Hei Awa Tupua, we, we have to bring that to life because it's these little streams that flow into the, our river that make it what it is. 
uh, Wanaungatanga relationships. Um, Mana and Hapu collaborate in fisheries and environmental resource management to achieve our Wano and Hapu driven objectives. And Wano on a plus on the river, we don't do a very good job of collaborating with each other. Um, and um, we have to get over that and put um, the fish as, uh, as a, a, a not about what we know or sharing, it's about the fish put. And, and I suppose a good example that we can give of how iwi can collaborate to, to achieve something. One of my roles, I chair the Taiho Aori Fisheries Forum, FMA8. And in 2009, we put a fisheries plan together. Okay, it took us nearly 18 months. And I had to go somewhere and talk to them about it outside of FMA8. And they said to me, how the hell did you get 17 iwi to agree? I said, easy, look at the fish. Don't look at each other, look at the fish. The fish is the important kaupapa, not the iwi. And I said, it was easy. They, you know, what we want in Wanganui is no different to what they want around in Taranaki, what they want down in Wellington. So look at the fish. And that's what we need to do with the, our relationship building. Look at the tuna, look at the tuna. Make the tuna and the river the focus, not us. Wano and Wano, Hapu and Iwi have sufficient capability and capacity now and into the future. And once again, it's about um, tapping into the Erika's, to the, these clever people, really clever people, and, and getting some help, and also finding some money to pay for that. Um, and the other area was government agencies. You can see them there, including Fish and Game. There's to establish the establishment of a fisheries coordination group so that, um, yeah, it's bringing them all together to for a common cause, really. And I, I never left you out, Mike. Commercial fishers, once we get our plan together, we'll go to all these people and, and present our plan to them um, so that it's our plan we're presenting. But we acknowledge that the commercial fishers, um, John, Mike, you have a role to play. You have a lot of data that could be helpful. And the other ones we forget is the recreational users. Those that kayak the river, those that jet boat the river, those who think because they've got a, a permit to stay at a dock hut, they can do what they like on the river. Um, so, yeah, so we need to haul that in somehow. In conclusion, we, we believe our strategy will ensure the health and well-being of tuna in our catchment firstly and foremost. To support our fisheries group to contribute to the protection and sustainable utilisation of fisheries within our Wanganui catchment. And lastly, the survival of our tuna is currently determined by others. It is, we have no say really. We're have, we have another consultation group on the, on the list. Oh, I better send it out to these, better send it out to there. I think it's time for us to step up. And, we, and I think we, it's, the time is right for us to step up and and let's look after it ourselves. Let us control what happens in the future. Um, those others that are currently um, doing management for our tuna, they don't give a damn razu about our mokofuna in the future if there's going to be tuna for them. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, not at uh, Kia ora. <laughs>